Okay, so probability basic, what is the main thing you need to remember in probability? What is the first and foremost thing? What is the probability defined as? So the likelihood of an event happening. Correct. Event. So probability of any event A is the number of point in that divided so by the number of points in the sample space. Outcomes. So basically number of favorable outcomes possible upon total possible outcomes. Upon total possible outcomes. Correct. So number of favorable outcomes upon total number of possible outcomes. That's your probability. Now you should know the terms. What is the sample space? What is sample space? Is this is this set of all possible outcomes? All the possible data, all possible events. All the possible outcomes, you know, you put in your sample space. So number of uh, set of all possible outcomes. set of all possible outcomes correct that's your sample space yeah your experiment is like rolling a dice tossing a coin that's called the experiment experiment is something that you do yes sample space is all possible outcomes and event is the something that you want like suppose you know your experiment is tossing a coin your sample space will be when you toss a coin your outcomes are head or tail that's your sample space, correct? Any event is you getting ahead. So one possible thing out of this. Okay. Now, next thing you need to remember that probability of any event will lie between 0 and 1. Not happening or will happen. Yeah. And always it will be a fraction between 0 and 1. It can't be negative. Okay. The next thing you need to remember is Complementary events. What are complementary events? So when they happen together or happen linked to each other. Now, complementary events when you're looking at. So I can show you complementary events with a Venn diagram. So if you if you think of a Venn diagram, if this is event A, this is A dash. Means it rains, probability that it rains, and the probability it does not rain. Those are complementary events. Correct? So probability of A dash is 1 minus probability of A. A. Suppose probability that it rains is 0 0.7. What are probably it won't 0 be? 0.3. 0 0.3, 1 minus. So these are complementary events. The next thing you need to remember is your addition theorem. Now what exactly is addition theorem? Addition theorem is when you are doing probability of A or B. Union. A union B, A or B. The formula is probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. Now again this is understood well from the Venn diagram. So if you think of the Venn diagram. Correct? This is A, this is B. Now, this is probability of A. Or probability of B. Now, what is happening is, this middle part is getting counted twice. So, minus. So, minus. So, minus that one. So, probability of A or B, basically, this is A or B. Probability of A or B. And you count it twice, you just minus ah, the intersection minus it once. You minus the intersection once. Because they are double counted. Yes. And remember, this is A and B. So for mutually exclusive events, it just be P A plus P B, right? Perfect. What are mutually exclusive events? That one can only happen if the other one doesn't happen. So there will be no intersection. There is no intersection. So, so mutually exclusive events. So can mutually exclusive events happen together? No. No. So if you think of the mutually exclusive events, as you correctly said, they are two disjoint sets as we call it. So for mutually exclusive events, you must remember that probability of A union B is probability of A plus probability of B. And probability of A intersection B is equal to 0. Yeah. There is no intersection. These are mutually exclusive events. 
Now the next thing that you need to remember is conditional probability. What is conditional probability? So that one can happen based on the other one happening only. So like a given if B. A happens, uh, only then B has a chance of happening or not. Correct. So probably of A given B. So what's the probability of A happening when B occurs or if uh, yeah, B, if yeah. after B occurs? After B occurs. So probably that the formula is probably of A intersection B upon probably of B. And so B again if you're looking A, B, Yes. So again A, if you're looking at your Venn diagram. So what is that, you know? So A given B. So probably that B happens. So this is probably that B happens. And after B happens, what is the chance that A happens? So it's, it's basically the red upon the yellow. The red is the red. So that's your A intersection B? Upon the time. So first your B will happen. And then after B happens, what is the chance that A happens? So that's your A given B. And obviously your B given A will be the same thing, correct? Okay? You will do your B intersection A, which is same as A intersection B, upon probably of A. Now this gives us the basis for your probability of A and B also. So now from this it follows that A and B, if we cross multiply, is probability of B into probability of A given B. Or it is probability of A into probability of B given A. If you cross multiply, look at this. If you cross multiply. If you cross multiply. The next important thing you need to remember is independent events. What are independent events? They don't depend on each other, as it says. Probability of one doesn't affect the probability of the other half. Like two boys running, running a race or two athletes running a race. Basically, so in the condition part, the, yeah, the rest of PA can still happen. Yeah. If two athletes are running on a track, they are independent one. events. Can both of them clock the same timings? Yes. Yes. Possibly. But the probability is very low. Yes, yeah, so that's the independent event. Uh, that's the independent so independent events can happen together, but the probability of that yeah, happening is very yeah, low yeah. because when you multiply two fractions, the fraction further reduces. Exactly. So the formula for independent event is probability of A intersection B is probability of A into probability of B. This is because if you look at the diagram above, you know this is also because your probability of A given B. Your A given B is same as property of A. Whether B happens or not, A is independent. Yeah. Okay. Or property of that B after A happens is same as B. It B is not affected by A happening. Exactly. But this is the majorly used. So if, when they ask you to prove it, you use this one major. Hmm? Yes. Okay. Now independent. Then What is the other thing you need to remember? Uh, so the next thing you need to know is the expected number. If you know the probability to find the expected number, you multiply. So expected number if you are finding, you multiply the number of trials by the probability. You multiply the number of trials by the probability. That will give the expected number. Yeah, this is a mystery. It's fine. Now, another important thing you need to remember is, sometimes this is helpful. If I draw a Venn diagram, this is your set A, this is your set B. This is your A intersection B. Yes, sir. Yeah, middle part. Yeah. This is your A intersection B. What is this? So this is your A and not B. Huh, A comma B. Also, I was just taking what A is this? B. No, 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 nothing. All that no, you can't. You can't no. no. What is this? This is not A and B. So that means, that means this gives us the basis for, so probability of A is equal to probability of A intersection B plus probability of A, A intersection B dash. 
So on either is intersection, or probably sorry, probably A. Means A happens whether B happens or not. This part I'm talking. Yes, yes, yes. With the total of this and this. And similarly, probably a B will be B, A happens and B happens, or A does not happen and B happens. No B happens. So sometimes this is useful. So this all is a good one, sir. Ah, this is, this is very important. It's not there in your formula booklet. So these are all the formulas you need to remember for your probability. This this from the basis of your probability.